I'm Jamie at Child Care Answers. I'm the Family Engagement Specialist, so I can help families with finding child care, education on what quality looks like in child care, but then also just general parent education as well. And we work with community partners, and that is why we have brought Connor Prairie here today. First, thank you so much for letting me come on and walk you through our learning portal. But um, I've been at Connor Prairie for a little over a year now. Uh, before that, I was at Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum creating middle school specific science video content. Uh, among a team of other educators. So um, early learning is a little different than what I'm used to. Um, when I got to Connor Prairie, I began work on an e-learning ecosystem and a um, digital clone of the museum, which we now call the Connor Prairie Learning Portal. Um, with this learning portal, we wanted something first and foremost that would serve the learners um, and then also importantly be uniquely Connor Prairie. So um, there's a reason for people to actually uh, look at our content. Um, we actually haven't rolled it out completely, like we haven't pushed it out that much, um, so we could have time to build out more um, content and differentiated courses, um, but you're sort of getting a first look, uh, first look tour of how it works, what it can do, and um, really what we currently have to offer. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and first off show you how to get there. Um, cool. So this is just the Conor Prairie homepage, conorprairie.org. Um, it's really easy to get to. It's under Educate Connor Prairie Learning Portal. Um, it takes you to our main page that sort of gives you a rundown of everything, but for the most part, I'm going to be covering that in the webinar. So um, we're going to go straight to um, our View Online courses. And here we go. Um, so right now on our portal, uh, we have like four types of offerings. Um, the first basket is going to be virtual walkthroughs. Um, which I will run through one of them because it's actually a great tool to plan a trip to Connor Prairie with young ones. Um, we have what I call learning experiences, which use the universal theme um, as a lens to deep dive into a, a subject unique to Connor Prairie. I'll briefly go over what those look like, but uh, those are largely primarily for older learners. Um, we have continuing education courses for teachers or care caretakers, which hopefully um, will be particularly helpful. Um, and we have our live webinars, which we call Curious Conversations, uh, which has a different topic each month. And um, yeah, it goes into a 45 minute conversation surrounding it. Uh, we also have some legacy content. You can see navigation and transportation currency um, from some of the videos we made during COVID. Uh, we just wanted to keep those as accessible as possible because we know people were using them. Um, so we migrated them over to this platform. Um, I do want to take a second to talk about the name. Name can hold a lot of meaning and tell you a lot about something. When we were thinking about the purpose we wanted the Connor Prairie Learning Portal uh, to serve, we looked at a lot of different names. Um, but Portal was the one that really stuck out to me. Uh, a portal is a doorway that welcomes you into a space or even another world. Um, at Connor Prairie, one of our fundamental like internal trainings for interpreters is called Opening Doors where our staff uh, are trained to not only bring guests into the conversation, but let the guest's curiosity really serve um, and drive their own learning. Um, even the physical signs that welcome, welcome you into Prairie Town, one of our experience areas at Connor Prairie, uh, we call them portals. So we like to say that we invite our guests to step into and really be a part of the story that we tell here. Um, and we wanted our online offerings uh, to be no different. And that gives me, um, brings me nicely into our virtual tours. So um, we have uh, two virtual tours available. We have a walkthrough, uh, which is similar to a standard Google Street View, um, where you can stand at an intersection and like see all the buildings um, at like eye level um, or a perspective of a person on the street. And then we have a virtual interactive tour um, where it's basically the same thing, but all, all of the items are sort of clickable. Um, there's videos, there's photos that you can interact with uh, virtually. Um, if you're planning on physically coming, I suggest just doing the free walking tour because obviously we want you to experience it in person. Um, the virtual walkthrough is largely for people who can't make it um, to he to Connor Prairie physically. Um, so I'll be going through the walking tour, the free one, um, with you guys today, uh, just because that's sort of the most helpful. Um, so from this page, actually, you're going to go here. It's Connor Prairie Virtual Walkthrough. Um, select some options. Uh, you're going to have to choose enrollee age group. This is just to make sure we are FERPA and COPA compliant. 
Um, so I would do 13 or older and you add to cart. And then you go over here to your cart. I might have some other things in my cart already. Looks like cool. I already have the virtual walkthrough and you proceed to check out. We're not going to, if it's free, we're not going to take any of your actual billing information, but we are going to ask for some information. Um, it's, it's just so we can keep our site safe. And um, it also helps us um, when we're deciding what new content uh, to build. Uh, we can see trends, whether people are locals or if they're nearby or if they have teacher emails. We're not using any of that information on an individual level. We're sort of looking at um, what best to make the new content. Um, so then from here, after you fill all of this out, I can just sort of do that, place your order, and then you will get an email. Um, and that email is really important. That's what enrolls you into the course. Um, so from that email, you'll register for an account and then... Um, once you create an account, anytime you enroll in new courses, um, they'll just show up on your portal. So uh, after enrolling, you can come back here and sign in and get any of the classes. So um, when you create an account, it'll take you to this. This is our Connor Perry Learning Portal, actually. Um, it'll have all of the courses that you're enrolled in. Um, courses, and there's also resources, which is what our Curious Conversations fall under. Um, so I'm going to take you through this walking tour first off. Um, Unfortunately, for various reasons, I um, did not uh, map out our indoor spaces, but we do have a couple of indoor spaces that are open um, year round and uh, they're great exploratory spaces. So you can keep that in mind if you're planning a trip. Um, but yeah, uh, this maps out pretty much all of our uh, outdoor spaces once our grounds open, which our grounds open March 28th, uh, next Tuesday, if you're curious. Um, so it launches you right into uh, where you would walk out onto the grounds. Um, you can navigate by clicking on these little circles, which will take you forward. Or you can even go back to where you were. Um, and there's also this map where you can click anywhere on the map and it'll take you to wherever it is in Prairie Town. And if you can't see that, you can open up the map and it has things labeled. Um, yeah. Um, I want to emphasize that this walking tour is not meant to like replace an experience coming to Conner Prairie. Obviously, we want you to come, be outside, and um, engage with our staff and um, the environment that we are so lucky to have, um, and the nature surrounding the White River and all of that. Um, but this is great if you are coming with some um, young learners and you're worried about um, how long of a walk places are or um, what some uh, areas might be before you come. And so um, just to give you an idea, I've mapped over two miles worth of walking paths that Conor Prairie has to offer. That's like 400 some photos. Um, so you can get a feel for how long a walk uh, might be between place to place. I'll drop us down in the middle of Prairie Town real quick. Um, between every, all of these little circles is around 10 to 15 paces. Um, and then of my normal pace. Um, and then you can just sort of skip around if you don't want to do that as well through the map, or you can click a couple circles ahead. Um, you can, um, yes, I, I plan on updating this while we get more experiences in. Uh, New Promised Land is Proving Ground is um, changing the landscape a little bit of Prairie Town, and that will be included in this. So you get a feel for um, any new things that are happening. Um, also, I'm hoping to um, expand it to the sunflower fields and some of our festival grounds. So if you're coming to one of our festivals, you sort of have an idea, a lay of the land before you come if you if you need it. Um, there's a couple of areas I do want to point out um, that aren't the most physically accessible uh, for strollers or wheelchairs or for any reason um, with either stairs or steep inclines um, that you can still see virtually uh, and then decide whether it's worth actually seeking out um, when you make the actual trip. Um, all of our interiors of our buildings are mapped, so you can see the second floors if they have stairs. Um, let's go to Golden Eagle. So if you notice Golden Eagle has a step up, a lot of our historic buildings don't have ramps, so it can be difficult, but you can enter the buildings here to see what's inside. Um, so if you do have strollers and you only want to make it to a couple buildings, you can see which ones the ones you want to make the effort for. Or if it has an upstairs, I'm now upstairs and you can see uh, what is upstairs and whether you want to um, go up there or not. There's a couple of other areas that are tricky to navigate. We'll go to the Connor house here. I actually have to go through 
uh, the house real quick to get to it. Um, we have a path down here to the spring house um, that is really uh, the most easily accessible by stairs. You can get a, a, a to it to, uh, through a roundabout way. But um, here you can see sort of what's down here. Look for the train um, to see how uh, accessible it is for you. Um, and then the last one that I do want to point out on this system is our Prairie Overlook, which is gorgeous. Um, and it's it's real far out and a lot of people don't know about it. So I love to point it out. And um, it is it is a bit of a walk, but you can tell by going through this virtual walk if uh, if it's worth it or not. Um, and that is at the, the tail end of our um, treetop adventure. Uh, what is it, treetop outpost? Yeah, okay. Um, which actually we can go here and sort of point it. So here's our treetop. And then we have the lookout out here. Um, and it's a, a trail that goes along the berm. And so this will let you sort of map out. And even our, our treetop has multiple floors that are um, only a bit accessible by stairs. So you can see what's up there. Um, you can map out a lot of things. Uh, the most like important places like picnic tables, or if you are looking for areas with chairs, uh, you can even, I have paths to the bathrooms mapped out. So you can plan your entire trip and be really prepared when you're coming here. Um, and then just for your context, for the interactive tour, it's very similar to this. Um, when you're in experiences, um, a lot of the things are clickable. Um, here, all of the maps are clickable on this free walking tour, but with the interactives, there's going to be videos and photos and all of that. Um, it's not the most helpful if you're planning to come anyway, because you could just experience it. Um, but yeah, so that is basket one. We have the experience or learning experience courses, um, which in keeping with Connor Perry's educational philosophy, uh, those courses are for older learnings or older learners, but they're interactive, full of choice and open-ended. Um, they utilize the 360 walking technology that I just showed you for that um, as a way to give students choice in what they explore. Uh, explore first what they want to, what ways they want to navigate the content. Um, so they end up learning through their own connections that they choose instead of the through the, some layout that we might give them. Um, and we have plans to pretty much uh, build out courses using that um, for every age group. Currently, we have um, one for fourth through sixth grade, and then one through seventh through ninth. Um, and then this brings me on to the next basket uh, of offerings that we have. And um, very early on in the creation of the portal, Brandy and I had discussions uh, about how it could be used for early learning. Um, and we decided it would be largely developmentally inappropriate for an early learner to be learning content off of a screen when they should be outside learning through play and nature whenever possible, um, and not necessarily on a computer watching videos. Um, so to still have digital content available for this age group, because we don't want to completely just ignore this age group, uh, we are targeting early learning teachers and caretakers instead of the learners themselves. Um, our newest course for this is our digital guide to Steam On Play Trip, which is, um, it goes through a play trip that we have um, at Connor Prairie um, called Steam On. Um, the play trip is for preschool to first grade. It introduces uh, STEAM topics, science, technology, engineering, art, and math uh, through play-based invitations. Um, the goal for this course isn't really for someone to do like a cookie cutter copy of what we do, um, but to inspire caretakers to create their own version at home or in the classroom um, because they know their students best uh, and can cater some of the invitations for their learners' interests, which we obviously can't uh, anticipate all of the interests everyone has. Um, the course we lay out uh, uh, in the course, I'll just go into it real quick. We lay out all of the in invitations. Um, each invitation comes with a book that we chose. Each one's each book's rooted in um, young people making discoveries or interacting with whatever concept in a historical base level, just to root each one also in history, because that's what we love to do at Connor Prairie. Ryan, would you be willing to share the introduction to Steam On video? I think so. I don't know if audio works, but we can. We'll, we can try it. Um, I love it. And um, it's just a great 
representation of what comes with the um, with each of the letters in STEAM and how how we're using that thinking to inform our practice. Um, and also a preview to the uh, upcoming Digital Twins to our other play trips, which have a history focus and it's about time and also a nature focus and sensing nature. So this would be a nice preview if we can get it to work just to show you what is included in each of those snippets of magic um, that will be part of our Digital Twins to each of our play trips. Welcome. My name is Susan and I am the Early Learning Program Coordinator here at Connor Prairie. And I am really excited to share with you our STEAM on play trip that we offer. A play trip is essentially a field trip for preschool through first grade students. They come to us from public and private schools, co-ops and homeschool groups. Now you may be curious about why our early learning field trips are called play trips. Here at Connor Prairie, we believe that play is one of the most important ways a child learns about their environment and begins to learn how the world around them works. Pediatricians, educators, and psychologists have been researching and sharing the benefits and importance of play for many years. And so our goal is simply to share the philosophy of learning through play and encourage educators and parents to intentionally provide play opportunities for the children in their own lives. Through intentional selection of materials and an opportunity for self-directed play, we design the play trip environment and overall experience to inspire curiosity and provide time for children to explore and discover. We believe that children need to be given the time, the space, and the freedom to play, tinker, think, wonder, explore, discover, and create. The focus is on the process involved rather than the final product, and the play that we observe and the dialogue we hear. Before we lead a class into Featherston Barn for the Steam on Play trip, we always let the students know that everything in the barn is set up especially for them, for them to explore, to build, to create, to wonder. It's set up for their ideas. Then we tell the teachers and chaperones to please, please just take a step back, relax, and let the kids take the lead. The philosophy behind this is that during this type of play process, the role of the teacher and chaperone is to listen, to observe, and think about what learning is taking place. Very little talking is needed unless a child invites you into their play, into their world. You will be amazed at what they will create when given the time space, and the freedom to run with their ideas. We chose to create a play trip focused on the STEAM subjects, science, technology, engineering, art, and math, because truly the whole point of STEAM in and of itself is to inspire inquiry and curiosity, which fits directly into our play philosophy of intentionally creating invitations to play that empower students to ask thought-provoking questions, promote creativity and exploration, develop critical thinking skills, and encourages problem solving. We felt creating play invitations based on each of the subjects in STEAM was truly the perfect blend to create a purposeful foundation for early learners to be exposed to science, technology, engineering, art, and math all through play. We have chosen a book to accompany each subject. You can feel free to choose books that you and your children are interested in. However, the books we are using were chosen because we felt it was important for us to focus on a child in history whose curiosity and creativity led to a significant contribution to the subject area 
and for the historical background and setting the child grew up in. Please join us now for an overview of the play invitations that we used during our STEAM on play trips. And we really hope that you leave today with some inspiration and some new ideas to try some of these play invitations in your own classroom or with your children at home. Each of the following videos walk you through um, the specific provocations and books that we selected for each of the letters in STEAM. Um, and this is just a good, a good picture for you and what the future digital twins will look like with our other play trips and other content, especially when it comes to early learning. Um, I don't want to give up all the secrets of the course because it's 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 right here. You can come and do it yourself. Um, but I do want to walk you through quickly about the technology play invitation because I did have uh, some help in uh, choosing what we were doing. Um, and all of the other play invitations uh, came from our early learning experts. Susan Billing was a big uh, force behind this one. And of course, Brandy uh, oversees all of this. So um, I don't want to take away. They, they came up with literally everything else. I was just helping with technology because I think it's important considering I just said we didn't think it was developably appropriate for uh, this age group to be in front of screens to be like, oh, we're going to do technology and we're going to put them in front of iPads. I thought it would make sense to sort of explain that a little bit. Um, for the invitation of technology, we wanted it to be a tool that would get them still up, moving, exploring the space around them. So it, it, they're not stationary, just staring at their screens. Um, and we found a way to do this through 3D object scanning software that is free. Um, we were able to download ours on iPads. Uh, application we used was called Scaniverse um, because it didn't require our iPads to have LiDAR. A lot of new cameras have LiDAR and you'll get better scans that way. But um, there are software to just have it a regular camera can 3D scan something, which I think is incredible. Um, and so we left our iPads out as play invitations with a couple of objects already scanned on them to engage with, either stationary or there's also augmented reality, which I'll go into. Uh, we were very purposeful in the items we also made available to our visitors. It was an op opportunity for us at Connor Prairie to make this experience uniquely Connor Prairie. You could put any objects, but of course, we want to put something uh, that's in our collection. Um, and items that students don't usually get a chance to interact with because either the object is rare, it's dangerous maybe, or fragile. Um, so if you are doing this with your own students, uh, you may want to scan things that they maybe aren't allowed to touch or play with on a day-to-day -day basis. My favorite one, uh, let's see, is this passenger pigeon. So we'll open up this passenger pigeon and you can take a look at it. Um, this passenger pigeon uh, we have in our collection was preserved with arsenic. Uh, and since they are now extinct, children wouldn't really have a chance to explore these in the wild. But with this technology, they're able to interact with this and um, they're not able to hurt it because it's fragile and they aren't really exposed to any of the dangerous arsenic. So it's a it's a really cool, unique way for someone, uh, a child to actually get to experience this that they otherwise wouldn't and they get to interact with it. Um, so to go along with the theme of technology also, let's see, where's my X button? There it is. Um, we chose some things that represent technology of the day. Uh, we have a foot warmer that actually used uh, coal to warm your feet. Um, and so it's obviously been replaced by newer and, and or safer technology. Um, each object itself gave the opportunity uh, for the student to learn more if they were interested. Um, the application also shows, um, also obviously allows them to scan objects that they wanted to. So it gives them the choice um, uh, to choose what objects they find interesting, or maybe you can make it a provocation of what they find important. Um, and then they have to problem solve a way to scan it because it, it's, a, it's a fun um, uh, trial and error to try and get them to scan. Um, and then also through augmented reality where they can basically take the iPad and place it in the space, uh, it gives them an opportunity to gain spatial awareness. And then think about how they even exist in a 3D space and thinking about scanning things in multiple dimensions and all of this. Um, and so we have our ones available for you to uh, learn from. Again, I would suggest you can also scan your own, um, especially if they're inaccessible to your young learners or if they're really expensive or fragile items. Um, 
And so that is that there, we go into science, we go into engineering, art and math, all into this course. Um, and we also offer some resources if you're looking for other um, technology or um, other books to go along with your play invitations. So I'll go back to this screen to talk about our last basket of things. Um, and it's Curious Conversations. And this one's a really fun one because it gives me an excuse to work with a lot of people all over Connor Prairie. Um, these are around 45 minute casual conversations about a topic. Um, for early learning ones, we did one in January about uh, transient art and making of identity. Um, it gives you a look at how our preschool uses transient art as play invitations and how transient art can actually help with the formation of identity for young learners. Um, and of course, it will hopefully inspire caretakers to take what we do at our preschool and uh, offer it to their young learners. Um, I don't want to speak too much about it because I don't want to take away from the magic um, uh, from the brilliant conversation. Um, but if that's something you're interested, that's a free course that you can enroll in. Um, and I highly recommend it. It's also the only curious conversation that we do that's not uh, live streamed. So I had an excuse to make it look real pretty. Uh, much more visual uh, much more visuals of people actually doing transient art of um, our preschoolers doing what we're saying uh, works and then also just different camera angles and make it look a little better. So I, I like that one. Um, the other conversation that we actually had this past month in March um, is about making purposeful space for those with autism or other sensory needs. Um, it's also a great conversation um, about making any space more accessible. Um, and specifically about our new sensory boxes that we will have out on the grounds when we open again on March 28th um, and why we chose all of the items and how we um, talked with the community on what items work and what items don't. And um, yeah, it's a, another great conversation. Um, these largely curious conversations can be a, a bit of a crapshoot of whether it's a uh, appropriate for younger learners. We, uh, in the next couple of months, there's going to be some um, like eighth grade, high school level things. Um, but if you're interested, I will sort of run through what our plans are for the next couple of months. Um, our ABLE conversation is about sustainability uh, along the White River uh, with our VP, Andrew Bradford and Kelly Brown from White River Alliance. And the target for that conversation is going to be eighth grade science standards, talking about how we impact um, the environment around us. Our main conversation is between our agricultural director, St Stephanie Buchanan, and uh, Dr. Michael Sturick, who does biomedical research into Osawa hogs, which we have a bunch of on our property. Um, and they're talking about why these animals are so important to us understanding diabetes. So how, how we can learn more about ourselves by the study of these hogs, which I think is fantastic. Uh, but that obviously higher biology level, um, and then our June conversation is going to be about civics and preparation for new civic standards in the fall. Um, so as you can tell, these topics are all, it gives us an excuse to talk about a lot of different things, which I find really cool. Um, but we're hoping to have more early learning conversations in the future, and we're always open to ideas. Um, we will also be having, similar um, to CMON, we'll be doing a uh, continuing education course uh, with Brandy and our wonderful preschool manager, Jana, um, about early learning education. And that will be sometime in April, whenever we get around to filming it. And then, um, yeah. And then the last thing I wanna mention is even this webinar, while obviously it's gonna be with uh, child care answers, we're also, um, we have it living in a blog on our Connor Prairie website uh, with context to this um, cool partnership that we did. Um, so I just wanted to say that it will be available. Thanks so much, Ryan. I think there's a lot of incredible information there. I could see, you know, as a parent, especially during the summertime, like maybe going and having your like teenager or like your 12 year old go through this and like plan their own trip. And like, I mean, that's part of STEAM is like trying to take their time to do the planning in order to um, have those experiences. So I could see this in a lot used in different ways um, within families in schools. So, yeah. Yeah, we're hoping so. And hopefully those virtual tours will be a much wider audience, obviously, than just we're, we're hoping it, it can reach like retirement communities who aren't able to make it here or uh, homeschool students, all of that as well.